let us understand the basic concepts of operation scheduling. Operation scheduling is one of the planning functions of an operations manager. This function of the operations manager is one of the most important in job shop processing. Operation scheduling focuses on how best to use existing capacity taking into account the technical production constraints. Often several jobs must be processed at one or more workstations. Typically a variety of tasks can be performed at each of these workstations. If schedules are carefully planned to avoid bottlenecks, waiting lines may start developing. Normally, scheduling is done after a number of managerial decisions have already been made. For example, planning for emergency services such as fire protection first requires an analysis of best location for fire stations. Second, decision about the type and quantity of firefighting equipment at each location. And third, staff planning for each location. Only after these have been planned, the specific work schedules for firefighters can be determined. Sound scheduling can help an organization achieve its strategic goals. For example, a fire department is better equipped to protect the community if an adequate number of firefighters are scheduled at all times of the day. Now there are two basic types of scheduling. The first one is workforce scheduling. So as the name suggests, this is basically scheduling the workforce or in other terms, the employees of a company. So this workforce scheduling determines which employees should work when. The second is operations scheduling. This function assigns jobs to machines or workers to jobs. Operation scheduling in job shops involve multiple activities. First, assigning job orders to different machines. Now suppose you have different machines M1, M2, M3 and M4. So let's say this is M1, this is M2, M3 and M4. And you have various jobs like A, B, C, D, E and F. So the jobs are A, B, C, D, E and F. So you have four machines and you have six jobs. So first 
activity is to assign these jobs to these machines. So which jobs will be processed on which machines? So let's say you decide that A and B would be processed on M1 and C and D would be processed on M2 and so on. So A and B will be processed on M1 and C and D will be processed on M2. Now the second activity is to decide the sequence of processing on different machines on the basis of some priority rule which is called sequencing or prioritization. So second is sequencing or prioritization. So in this example, we first decided that A and B should be processed on M1. Now out of A and B, which one should be processed first, A or B? This will be determined based on the priority of orders. This is known as sequencing or prioritization. Now the third activity is planning the route of movement of material from one department to another during processing. So let's say this is one department, M1, M2, M3, M4 are in the milling department, let's say. So once these jobs are passed through the milling department, then they may have to go to other departments like, let's say drilling or grinding or packing. So this is called routing. So which departments will these jobs flow through? So the third is routing. Now once the operations manager has planned these activities of scheduling, prioritization, etc. Then the dispatch list is issued to various work centers. This dispatch list contains information about the work center at which a customer order should be processed, the sequence of customer orders to be processed and the amount of time the processing should take. This process is known as dispatching. Now once all the planning has been done, we need to track the progress of various scheduled jobs and the implementation of schedules and in case there is a delay, we need to find ways to bring the execution back on track. This process of bringing the schedules back on track and making sure that all the orders are processed on time is known as expediting. So fifth is expediting. Now the absence of proper scheduling may lead to various problems. Let us first draw a time calendar to understand this. The 
these are days and this is zero. Now suppose job A is due to be sent to the customer on day three. So on day three, it needs to be sent to the customer. This is job A. And it takes three days to manufacture job A. Job B is due on day five. And it takes two days to manufacture it. And job C is due on day six and it takes one day to manufacture it. Now assume that there is no proper scheduling and the workers are picking up jobs to be processed at random. So suppose the workers first pick up job C to process. So they will start on day zero and because it takes one day to manufacture job C, they will complete it on day one. So this is where C will get processed. Now after job C, let's say they pick up job A. Now job A takes three days to process. So one, two, three. So on the fourth day, job A will be completed. Now after processing job A, they pick up job B. And B takes two days to process. So on the sixth day, job B will be processed. So here as you can see, job C is completed before its due date. However, jobs A and B have been delayed. So the first disadvantage I would put of not proper scheduling is delays in meeting due dates of customer orders. Now in the same example, we can see that job C has been completed on day one. However, it cannot be shipped to the customer till day six because the customer may say that they want the order to be shipped only on day six. So from day one to day six, the manufacturer has to keep this job in their inventory. So basically their inventory is increasing. So the second disadvantage is high inventory. Now let's take another example. Suppose there are four jobs. A, B, C and D. Now A and B require one kind of setup on the machine. So once you change the tool on the machine, you can process both A and B on the same tool. But for C and D, you require a different kind of tool. 
and both require the same tool. Now suppose you process A first and then C and then B and then D. So for A, you will do the setup on the machine. Then for C, you will have to change the setup because C needs a different tool than A. Then once you have completed C, you will have to change the setup again for B and then again for D. So if there is no proper scheduling, another disadvantage is higher setup time of machines. So third disadvantage is higher setup time of machines. Now because the setup time is higher, basically this will lead to a higher overall completion time of all the jobs. So fourth disadvantage is higher overall completion time. Now when we looked at this example here where we assign A and B to M1 and C and D to M2 and so on. Out of these six jobs, suppose you decide to schedule five of them on machine M1 and one on M2 and leave M3 and M4 idle. What will happen is that there will be an uneven workload on few machines which will increase the wait time of the jobs on this machine while other machines are idle. So the fifth disadvantage is uneven workload allocation and increased wait times. So uneven workload allocation and increased wait times and this in turn will result into low utilization of workers and machines and high cost of operations. Hence, in order to avoid such undesirable situations, operation scheduling is a must for every organization.